Hey, welcome back. Flutter has recently announced the stable version 2.5. In this version, there are many features that have come along. But the most striking feature, or you can say promising feature, which would give you a clear direction, how you can manage your Flutter applications, how you can create your Flutter applications, what should be the folder structure, what should be the state management technique that you can use, how you should be doing localization, how you should be changing the themes, how you should be applying the lint rules. This video is sponsored by App Circle. Build your apps, distribute it to testers and upload it to app stores. All automatically with quick and easy setup. You can find one month free coupon code and link in the description box. In my machine, the current Flutter version is 2.5 on the stable channel and the Dart version is 2.14. There are two ways now you can create a Flutter application. The default way, the default way, this is your default way. If you create this, the Flutter project is created for you, right? And then you will go to this folder location, open the VS code. What is there in this now? Lib main.dart, what do you have here? You have the same old counter application, right? You will generally remove everything. They are using search state here, which is uh, not recommended for bigger applications as it decreases the performance. It re reloads everything. So what is the use of this project? You delete everything and then you start from the fresh. You create your own app.dart, you create your own uh, files, you uh, create your own localization, you handle your states uh, by adding one of the state management libraries like block, like provider or anything else. One thing that they have added is the analysis options. If you see here, it now adds Flutter lints by default into the project. And in the pubspec.yml file, you will see Flutter lints dependency. What this helps you with is it automatically gathers all the recommended rules by the Flutter team and it is stored in this package. Then this package is by default applied to your application. Whenever you violate any of those rules, there will be a warning. Okay. Now let's close this. Come back. The new way is Flutter create specify the template, which is called skeleton. And now you give it the skeleton way. You getting my point? Flutter create, specify that you want to use the skeleton and then give your project name. Enter. It will create the project in the similar fashion within the same time duration. Then you go to the directory, open VS code again. And let's see now you now what you have. Analysis, analysis options is it still there. So it's by default as well as it's in the skeleton. Then in the pubspec.yml file, you will see localization, which means that Flutter has said that this is the default or recommended way of having localizations in your application. Okay. Then they have this lint, which is already there. Of course, when you are using localization, you have to do generate to generate as true. Next, we recognize that assets are also given to us. So Flutter logo is there and it has two more variants, Flutter 2 and Flutter 3, which means that somehow internally, this app is going to use the 2x or 3x version based on the screen density. So this is another addition in this skeleton. So whenever you want to add more images, now you need to add variants of those images if they are not SDGs, of course. Then coming to the folder structure. First of all, looking at these folders, you recognize that the folder structure is according to the features. Settings is one of your feature. Localization is your one feature and sample feature. This sample feature consists of two screens. One being a list view, other being a detail view. So they suggest that you create your applications based on the features like localization you cannot deny you have to most of the applications have two minimum two locations or two languages at least so the default way that they prefer is using arb files 
this with the name itself suggests that it will support english language your title is there the skeleton bay is your name is a title description is not used so you can give anything here if you want to employ another translation you just create another version of that file and change it to the spanish way just i don't know spanish but i'm just putting a different text so that i can show you that if your device preferred language is english or spanish it will use that language now where do you have to tell your app that you support the two languages so coming to your app dot dot you have this local supported locales we we'll copy this and tell the code what is this flutter underscore gen where you can find that and how how this file and where is this file currently so in dart tools it's right now empty as soon as i run this application using this command flutter run i'm just running the application in my ios simulator so this is your application and all of a sudden the errors are gone from app dot dart it means the compiler has found where these files are located so where are these files and how those got created in dart tools flutter underscore gen folder inside that you can see app localization app localization es which means spanish app localizations en which means english so whatever was mentioned here got replicated or you can say the files are generated now for you to use them your app title was this for english for spanish your app title was spanish way now how do you use them for that again go to your um, app dot dart it's already been used here in the app localization in the generate title but again it's sort displayed right now so what we will do is in one of the screen in the list view screen i would i will give the title as app title i will like to import it of course it doesn't uh, recognize the import so we can copy it from here and paste it here okay now i think const will not be required yeah now if you reload the application the skeleton bay is your title now see the localization picture go to gen settings general language change it, change it to spanish your phone will restart your app will disconnect everything will happen but you have to read on the application now okay you see the title got changed so this is the recommended way of using localization from flutter team now coming to app dot dart again let's talk about navigation what about navigation you are, again you every every flutter newbie is always uh, curious about how you can navigate from one screen to other is other screen right so the flutter team suggest uh, that you use material page route you generate the route and basically then you navigate Okay, from basically they are saying you navigate via named routes. Okay, so this is their default way of routing. So what happens is when someone uh, tells you that you need to go to details view from here list view navigator dot restoreable push named context and then the route, which means once you click on that list item, it will navigate you to the details page. and what is the use of restorable push named it is written here if the user leaves and returns to the app after it has been killed while returning in the background the navigation stack is restored so which means if you come back to the app the last route will be active this is about now navigate routing what about theming how you support light uh, mode and dark mode so for that you have these three things first you set a theme you set a dark theme as well okay these are the default themes not the customized ones and then you tell which theme mode to make it active and from where you get the theme mode for that 
they have told you one small structure to do such type of things. Settings view is our UI. Controller is you can say data holder or navigator which will take inputs from view like in this case. On changed you will talk to controller. You will call the method of the controller and then controller will handle the logic for you. Much like block which does the same thing. You click something, block handles that and then it returns a state. Similarly, they are using change notifier here. So whatever in the settings controller, like what are the fields of settings controller? Setting service, which is private, theme mode and then this theme mode. So whenever one of these things change, you can decide when you want to notify the listeners of this change notifier, right? So once this method is called with a theme mode, if it is null, you just return it. Of course, you are not telling the method which theme mode to switch to. It can't do anything. Then if it is the same theme mode as the private, as the last one, it won't do anything. If it is different, then the new theme mode which has come, like suppose currently you have a light theme mode. If you select the dark theme mode, this holds the dark theme mode value. The theme mode will get that dark theme mode and then you will notify the listeners. Now, who is listening to it? Who is listening to it? Second question is, what is this? Setting service. Now, service is something which is a, you know, acts as a, a class which can interact with third party or which can interact with the outside world. It can be your server side language, it can be your APIs or it can be your local database. So this method is not integrated as of now, but they have said that you can use shared preferences or database or API calls and inform your remote DB or local DB that the current theme is dark theme. This is the first, uh, last resort of this method. If you want to persist the changes, that's the whole gist of that. Now, what this notify listeners do? Go to the app.dart and see this. Animated builder, settings controller. What is the settings controller? Is the same change notifier. So your animated builder is actually looking for settings controller. And once the value is changed, this will be notified and the material app will be rebuilt. Of course, with the animation. So the switch between the themes will happen with the animation. Now let me come back to the app. You go to sample item. You can see the details page. So this is their default way of navigating. Now, if you want to go to settings screen, you can change it to dark theme. It changes the theme. I hope you like this uh, quick video of uh, sort of a recap of what hap what is a uh, template and uh, you will certainly apply this into movie app. Uh, you will change the localization and you will try to integrate the localization at least because that's a plug and play feature. It, it directly comes with so you don't you have to only maintain these two files. Nothing else. Everything will be generated for you. And then in the app localizations, you get this class, which we already have in the movie app. So I think nomenclature wise also, you don't have to rename anything. Just you can change the English and Spanish fi files. We have the data in JSON files. Now you will just move them to the other files. So I hope you like this video. If you have not subscribed to this channel, please do subscribe to this and uh, support the channel by liking and sharing this video among your friends. And yeah, see you in the next video. Thank you.